Hey everybody, it's Triple L coming in with My Hero Academia chapter 275. The chapter where Izuku and Bakugo came face to face with most likely death. You know, they had a fever dream, they thought they were going to die. It was it was pretty pretty wild. You know, if you were looking at it without context, it'd be like, oh my god, like Bakugo and Izuku, they're going to be messed up forever. But of course, the author wouldn't do that because it's a little bit too early to mess these guys up forever. They're the main characters, you know. Anyway, point is, chapter 75, it was a very interesting chapter. So, hey, everyone, uh, let's just get into it. I don't have that many general notes. I think most of the notes are going to come out when we go into the actual ch chapter proper. And that's going to be because uh, there were some, well, how would you describe it? There were some points where some debate was had about what was going on. Um, they're not really in the broad strokes. It's mostly like little details, which depending on what kind of person you are, that's even more infuriating. Uh, so we'll go through it. I'll point out which spots I saw on comments giving people problems. And yeah, we'll have a good time. In terms of general notes, what I got is I'm very happy with the fake out that we got. Uh, so I was going into this thinking that we were going to get at least one chapter of Izuku and Bakugo struggling against Shigaraki. Maybe we're going to see Shigaraki uh, get distracted by Izuku and then some people could like sneak some hits in. That's what I thought we were going to get. Um, but no, what we got here was just a massive fake out. Even the chapter halfway through is still a fake out. When you're going into the Bakugo monologue, it's still a fake out. Uh, Izuku and Bakugo pretty much come face to face with the guy and they get just bolted out of there. Um, so... I really like that. I like that the heroes came in. I like that they're actually doing stuff. I like that they're competent. Um, I was expecting heroes to show up to help, obviously, but this quickly was a nice surprise. Um, one thing I really did like was also Aizawa going long range. You know, last chapter we were talking about, man, Aizawa could be on top of Ryukyu. She could, or they could do some really nice last minute saves and Aizawa would be safe from Shigaraki in general. So I do like that we did get long range Aizawa. That was pretty cool. Like it's actually pretty cool seeing like how much he was looking at Shigaraki who was a spec. So overall, did not expect it, but I'm very happy for it. Uh, and the most surprising part is really that uh, Izuku and Bakugo didn't get an opportunity to actually face down with Shigaraki and just got, uh, well, yanked out of there by Gran Torino. Anyway, let's do the page by page walkthrough because that's where all the value is this time for this particular chapter. And we're starting with page one, the ragdoll screwed everyone over page. Well, not really, you know, I'm just saying that she didn't screw anyone over. It's not her fault. Uh, so this page gave us information on search, which was greatly appreciated. And it gave us a lot of other little things. The first thing I want to cover is who exactly are the nine lights that Shigaraki is seeing here? And the, way, and the reason I'm bringing this up is because who is the ninth light is the real question. And guys, I might be, well, I might not remember something, but here's my perspective. Shigaraki says that these are the people that Ragdoll had seen up to the moment that she had her quirk taken away, right? I went back to chapter, let me see what I got here, 258. In this chapter, we see who's on Izuku's side of things. It's Izuku, Shoto, Bakugo, Suyu, Ida, Ochako, Kota, and Manga. That's eight people. Unless I'm missing someone, that's eight people. Um, so the real thing I'm wondering is who is the ninth light that uh, Shigaraki is seeing? Is it Nejire? Because she's the only other relevant character. There might be another class 1A or class 1B character. Or actually, there might be another class 1B character there. But it's really hard to tell because they haven't popped up. And if it's Nejire, then that kind of brings up a lot of questions. Uh, and, you know, I'm not going to say that Nejire is a traitor or anything, because at this point, anyone is a traitor or everyone is a traitor, just because you just, there's not enough details. Uh, but if ne if Nejire is one of the lights, that's kind of like, that's weird. I mean, you can justify it, but like, that's going to take some, that's going to actually take the author telling us what's going on. Anyway, though, um, that first panel does tell us that there's no one following the duo. But again, who is the ninth light? Who do you guys think it is that Shigaraki is seeing? Um, another point going off of search is that uh, given that search is accumulating data, it probably means that search is an accumulation type quirk, which is also interesting because it confirms that all for one will take even accumulated experience, which really should have been a question. Um, that makes sense. You know, stealing is different than copying, especially a shallow copy like Monoma's. Uh, so makes sense that Shigaraki can take the accumulation. Although I, I imagine that there's some quirks that would still be exceptions, like maybe Fat Gum's quirk in terms of what's being accumulated. 
Uh, but in terms of a one for all stockpile, probably if Higuraki was able to steal one for all in general, he'd be able to take it. Um, now, the interesting part in terms of a thought experiment would be like a person like Hagakure. Uh, if Shigaraki stole Hagakure's quirk, would he take the light refraction ability that she recently unlocked? Or would he have to unlock that himself? I would say that he would probably take that ability too. I think the difference here would be, you know, you have functions that can be stolen and then you have the experience that tells you how to use those functions or like, le that allows you to use those functions well. So with someone like Best Genus, on paper, he controls fibers, right? But you actually need to be really skilled to actually control those fibers as well as Best Genus does. It's not the same as Hagakure. Hagakure can do light refraction and she can influence light that's outside of her body. Uh, those are functions her quirk can do. I feel like once you unlock that, that's something that she could actually could take. But honestly, uh, we need a test case. But I do think there's a difference between the skill to use a function and the function itself. Another worthwhile point in that first page was that the pussycats were not showing up in the light. And, you know, there's tons of ways to justify that. Maybe they weren't in the area that was shown in the panel. Um, but I do think Ragdoll would have her friends registered in her quirk because, well, why would you not have them registered when you're in a summer camp in the woods? You just keep them registered. There's no there's no reason to not keep them registered. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how that works out. Uh, but overall, this page was a wonderful surprise. Last time I was overthinking it with maybe thinking that there was either Shigaraki was zooming in on Izuku or something else was going on. Actually, for some part, I, I thought it was Shigaraki's own experiences, but I, for, I did forget... Um, the user lays their eyes on condition. I did legitimately forget that. Uh, so cool stuff to get the explanation here. Cool stuff to get the exposition here. Really appreciate that. The author did great for that one. Uh, on page two and three, I don't think we have anything that's super valuable aside from setup for the rest of the chapter. We had an Aizawa cover that nods that Aizawa is going to be coming in for the save at the end of the chapter. And then the last panel of uh, page three, does something fun with setting up Shigaraki's horrendous fall on page four and five. Like, look at the face on this guy, man. Do you know how special you have to be to look like in one page you're about to like nail the landing to only then nail the landing and then whack your whole body into the ground? And then to top it off, you make a point of staring at the big fireman. Yeah, man, it was it was pretty funny. It was not graceful at all, but I'm so happy that it was here. Like, guys, look how ridiculous this is. It looks like he's actually managed to land on his feet, but then he whipped his upper body into the ground because just turning his head like a normal person would have been too tame. Like, it's really actually impressive that his butt stood unwavering as the rest of his body turned into a pretzel. Like, that butt did not change the orientation it was at when it landed. Man, but this is what happens when you have people with regen, right? They do unnecessary things, and <laughs> it freaked and ever out too so that was pretty funny anyway page six and seven this is a page that has some debate surrounding it but before we get to the debate i want to say it does look like izuku is actually hopping around which means he doesn't have float well enough handled which if you guys know i was really hoping for a sublime float reveal i was really hoping for it to just be like yeah izuku is competent enough to figure out how to get float but now it does look like we're going into a dramatic float reveal which you know, whatever. It's just, you know, maybe Izuku has float. He might legitimately have it, uh, but he's not using it for some reason. I, I don't know, because this is the same page where Izuku just realized that Bakugo was chasing him after talking to him while they were going together. Uh, so maybe Izuku's having um, a little bit of a ditzy moment here. Uh, but right now, probably, it does look like Izuku probably doesn't have float, which is unfortunate. Again, ways to justify that he has it and is not using it, but it looks like we're going for a dramatic float reveal. I don't know, man. I really think in my perspective, you have three months with this kid, you toss him off a roof and let it, the fear trigger float. And then just don't tell him that you have a trampoline at the bottom of the place where you like dropped him off from. That's how I would do it, but maybe I'm too Spartan. I mean, Urahara let Ichiko almost become a hollow, right? Like there, there's been more brutal training methods in the history of Shonen Jump. Anyway, going to the debate, the debate centers around um, what Shigaraki exactly has as his regen quirk. So all I'm going to tell you is that I don't care about this anymore. I don't care about this whole debate with the regeneration stuff. The fact of the matter is the translations are botched. Here's what you need to know. Shigaraki can regenerate pretty nasty wounds, but he cannot regenerate his missing fingers. According to Viz, Endeavor in this chapter calls it hyper-regeneration. The fan translation called it super-regeneration. The Hero Academia Wiki calls it super-regeneration. 
Viz translations for chapter 59 say hyper-regeneration will take another five years to achieve. The Fallen Angel Scan Group translation for chapter 59 called it super-regeneration. And instead of what the Viz group has, they have the doctor lamenting that they didn't get super regeneration sooner. And the anime dub seems to follow the fan translation for Fallen Angel, and the anime subs also follow the fan translations. So in other words, this is a pretty botched situation. Most likely Viz is incorrect about chapter 59. Everyone else says something different. My verdict, if the doctor is berating the regen in chapter 59, it probably means that Shigaraki has a regen quirk that can't naturally regenerate wounds that are already closed up which would explain the missing fingers and it would be consistent with the translation that are not Viz's translations. At that point, I will do a very quick shout out to Sarge. Sarge has a anime channel, Animeverse. I will link it in the description, maybe. He has a better mind for remembering stuff than I do. And very occasionally on live streams, he points out stuff that I would not have known. So definitely give him a check. Uh, Feel free to just say hi to him on like a video or two. He sometimes pops up in the comments down below. Anyway, moving on. The other thing going on this page is uh, Endeavor is concerned about Izuku, which is cool. And back goes yelling a lot, which is like always pretty cool. Uh, any other things? Oh, yeah, this page, we start uh, Bakugo's motivations in his little monologue here. So page 89 covers the end of Bakugo's monologue. And actually looking at Bakugo's face on this bottom of page 8, I was actually pretty freaked out with Bakugo here. This face doesn't inspire confidence for me. Actually, it makes me feel like he's maybe a little bit too rabid. Um, especially when compared to the face in the flashback where he seems a little bit more grounded. I just came away happy that they didn't fight here because... The way that Bakugo looked here, it felt like he would have been the one making mistakes. Like if, if, I, if I'm saying that Shigaraki is going to be getting distracted because Izuku is there, Bakugo is going to get distracted and make simple mistakes. It felt like he was riding too much emotion. And, it, you know, when you have too much emotion going into this, you just it's easy to miss stuff. Right. Um, so I was concerned with this shot just because it looked a little bit too rabid. But what did you guys think? Uh, did you get confidence from this shot of Bakugo's face or were you kind of concerned too? Actually, the face, now that I'm thinking about it, reminds me a lot of like that early era of Bakugo when he was uh, dealing with Izuku in that, that first uh, practical that the kids had. Like, what do you even call it? When Bakugo was teamed up with Ida. Anyway, um, other good things in this two pages. We had Bakugo explaining Izuku's growth, with, which honestly itself is a cool narrative technique. Um, it's because it's cool to see that Bakugo was watching enough to know Izuku's me uh, mechanisms. And it's cool that he's still managing to keep up. This was a really cool way of telling us what Izuku was doing. And it coming from Bakugo actually is a lot more valuable than it coming from Izuku. Because it tells us more about Bakugo in this case. So that was really, really good. Um, and the good stuff for Bakugo keeps going on when you go into page 10 and 11. So here, it's cool to when Bakugo says he can't afford to stay a loser. Because that implies that Bakugo still sees himself as a loser. So we know that he has a character arc. We know he blames himself for All Might. Um, but it's cool, again, to see just him saying it out loud. Because that's, that's, a, that's a quiet acknowledgement that he still thinks he's a loser. That's just... It's cool. It's cool to see the character, to some degree, uh, looking at some parts of his personality as failures. Um, and it's cool to see that he isn't wallowing in his failure. He is trying to step out. Mind you, I think he's stepping out with a little bit too much emotion. I think that could have ended disastrously, uh, but it's still really cool. And I do ultimately feel really bad for the character. This all comes from Bakugo blaming himself for what happened to All Might. And, you know, it sucks that he still blames himself for that. And I don't want to attribute blame to Bakugo, like, really. Like, he can't control that people thought that they could kidnap him and, and convert him. He can't control that. Like, yeah, he was a little shit in the early days, but... He's still a kid. He's still in his growing phase. Same with Izuku. As much as I love to rag on Izuku, Izuku's also still growing. Like, all the kids are still growing. They're still not even, like, fully formed people. Um, so it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate that the character has such a terrible self-image. But at the same time, it's great that he's one of those characters that, despite having a bad self-image, is still clawing to get out of there. You have his monologue there with him saying that he's going to go higher than the Chosen One. And it's like, great, great. Yes, it sucks that you don't like yourself, but it's great that you're not just going to wallow. This is an aspect of Bakugo's personality that I think actually would be cool for people to emulate just because, again, he picks himself up by his bootstraps kind of thing. 
On page 11, uh, the most interesting thing is that we have Shigaraki muttering to himself, which, which again tells us that he's in the discovery phase of his powers. So given everything here, in the previous chapter, I thought the way forward to beating Shigaraki would be, you know, make him get distracted with Izuku and let everyone else attack him while he's distracted. And to some degree, we still are kind of seeing that here. Like his laser focus on Izuku is kind of blinding him to other things, but it's not as critical. Uh, but then we have the discover. Uh, well, we have this. Um, which implies that maybe the heroes might get away with a few mistakes if Shigaraki doesn't realize what powers he has and if the heroes keep the pressure up on him. So that would be really, really good. Oh, actually, uh, just looking at his costume here, I just remembered. Um, on the Shigaraki fall page, there was a spot there that looked like bullets had fallen out. I'm showing it on the screen here. Uh, but that just that just seems to be part of his costume. I don't think any bullets fell out. Anyway, uh, page 11, Shigaraki uses radio waves and wipes out communications, which is going to be pretty critical when we talk about Aizawa. And now we're going to page 12 and 13, and we're going to talk about 14 and 15 as well, because these are the pages that cause some degree of confusion. So let's break it down. This is my interpretation. First, I don't think Shigaraki teleported. We have a panel with motion lines that implies that he just naturally hopped over. Secondly, any shot of Izuku and Bakugo disintegrating is not actually happening. It's just a terror-induced nightmare or a daydream. Uh, Viz called it fear of death. A fan translation called it an image of death. Is the hallucination the product of a quirk or is it just natural survival instincts? Well, I don't really know. It's it's kind of tricky. Right now, I'm leaning to no. Um, I think this could be the equivalent as like Merkel feeling that Shigaraki was a monster. Um, people just have repulsive feelings regarding villains in general. It could just be a natural aura that Shigaraki carries. A big thing to note in that regard is that Izuku narrates in these scenes. He's the one that compares it to the experience being near all for one. Uh, and he's the one that says it's a death image or attributes it to the visual or attributes the visuals to the fear of death. Uh, that just makes it seem like this is just Izuku expressing the danger that they were just running towards. Or, you know, this could just be like in, in terms of showing. In terms of Shonen Jump terms, this could just also be like one of those scenes where a character has so much murderous intent that the other character sees themselves dying, right? Shonen Jump does this a lot. A lot of manga does this. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if that's what's happening here. Um, it might also be a quirk effect, however, like a quirk effect that's always on and targets people depending on how strong they are. It'd be something similar to hockey in One Piece. Uh, but yeah, like the only thing is like I feel that'd be too wishy-washy. So if it is a quirk, I do hope that the author gives us some exposition, at least on the level of the search exposition that he gave us in this chapter, just to tell us what's going on here. But for now, the point is, it didn't actually happen. It was an image of death that Izuku and Bakugo had that I think ultimately just says Shigaraki is very dangerous. Also, on page 14 and 15, we see that Shigaraki has a beautiful hole on his palm. I mean, it's really super detailed. The, the real question is, is that part of the all for one quirk or is that part of the air blast quirk? That's, that's the real question now. Um, could be both. <laughs> Who knows? Anyway, page 16 and 17, uh, Gran Torino comes in with the save. Like, Jesus, man, this old man is such an MVP. He's done so much for the plot. Like, holy crap moly. This guy's gonna outlive everyone. I'd be very surprised if Gran Torino dies. Uh, but yeah, uh, on page 16, we get more information on Decay, which I think makes sense. If a piece loosens because Decay got to it, it totally makes sense to me that whatever touches the piece that is still decaying is going to be in danger. So I love that the contamination factor is still spread. Uh, this trick, make like we have always known the trick to Decay is to cut it off before any part of Decay reaches the rest of the body, right? Uh, on page 17, so when I first saw Ryukyu, I thought this woman had a death wish. Like I saw it in the spoilers without context and it's like, oh my God, you're going to die, girl. And I honestly thought she was insane. But yeah, this was a really cool strat uh, with Aizawa here. So this is what we've been waiting for. Strategic Aizawa use. I'm so happy. Like I already said at the beginning, I was exp I wanted like long range Aizawa. This was a really good compromise. I am really concerned going forward. <laughs> Uh, but we're not uh, we'll talk about the next page uh but yeah this was really cool choreography uh page 18 and 19 though are where the rest of the action is at okay so we need to break this one down so first thing on page 18 we see shigaraki tossed into the air so this is brilliant the problem is going to be the moment that aizawa blinks aizawa already has a bad history with shigaraki uh, just see chapter 16 so tossing shigaraki into the air prevents shigaraki from starting a new decay spree by the same rules that he did earlier 
Uh, so now they just need to watch out for any strange long range quirks. So the other thing here is that uh, the team doesn't have comms. So hopefully they figure something out on how they're going to deal with Shigaraki and coordinate with Aizawa. Speaking of that, I want to say the distance is amazing for what Aizawa is pulling off. Like the man is a spec and it worked. So that was pretty cool. It's just cool to see it. Now I'm getting ahead of myself, but going back to the top in the panel, we see what looks like a damaged leg on Aizawa. And it seems to be his right leg. Now, I just want to show you real quick this image of which leg got manhandled by the Nomu. So, my question is, is this an error or is this another injury from another source? Anyway, Aizawa sets up a monologue here, which honestly is kind of concerning. You don't want to be setting up monologues when Shigaraki's like a few feet away from you. And finally, Shigaraki's last words are a callback to the time that Aizawa cancelled him. So, that was pretty cool to see here. So, we get to the end of the chapter, people are excited, what's going to happen? I don't know, is Aizawa going to die? I hope not. Is Aizawa going to get quirk bulleted? That would be a nice compromise. Is Higanto going to come in here and wreck things like a madman? Most likely. Uh, I do want to show you though this page from chapter 17, a quick reminder. Aizawa can't do anything about natural strength. Right now, there should be no way for Shigaraki to reach Aizawa without a quirk, but if Shigaraki's abilities or physical capabilities come from modified muscles, much like the Nomus, uh, the heroes really need to do their best to keep Shigaraki in the air so that he doesn't get any kind of foothold. Um, so again, it's going to require extreme long range coordination here. And honestly, maybe they can pull it off because already it's pretty insane that Aizawa timed it right with Ryukyu's attack. So at that distance where you can only see Ryukyu as a spec, honestly, that was timed really, really well. Like how is Aizawa seeing that far? So already pretty insane, but I do think this is going to be a fight where Aizawa needs to go plus ultra here if they want to beat Shigaraki. Uh, but going back to the muscle point, if Shigaraki is Hulk jumping by just the sheer strength of his modifier, of his scientifically modified muscles, then all the heroes are, are going to be in trouble. If this is going to turn into Aizawa versus the Nomu part two, it's going to suck. Um, speaking of the past though, I do want to just very quickly talk about a point that came up a few weeks ago. People said that 13 might not get decayed because they are a black hole. Um, well, just looking back at the previous chapter, 13 has a back and arms that can be lacerated. So if those can be lacerated, they can probably be decayed unless there's some kind of weird mechanism going on with his body being the suit itself or something or her body being the suit itself um but yeah i just think if, if 13 starts decaying 13's laceratable back would also be in trouble too uh but yeah anyway that's 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 all i got any where do we go from here i don't know it's cool combat i want Izawa to live don't know what state he's gonna be in and i do hope more heroes show up and make a show of these things uh i hope deaths are kept to a minimum like if if we're gonna I'm okay losing a bunch of no names, but I hope we only lose one big name if it comes down to that. But again, it's going to be interesting to see how they're going to coordinate. And I think next week is a break, which is unfortunate, but it's COVID time. So let's let everyone take a break. Anyway, everyone, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, I hope you have an absolutely great day.